drug raid with our law enforcement agencies. <clears throat> I want to give a special thanks to uh, Johnson County Sheriff Dwayne Burgess and Franklin PD Chief Kirby Cochran uh, for helping to orchestrate this thing. Um, we had a lot of departments help us out this morning to get these things accomplished. This is something that doesn't happen without a lot of collaboration and a lot of cooperation between various police agencies. This morning we had representatives from a number of police agencies including the Princess Lakes Police Department, Bargersville Police Department, Franklin Police Department, Edinburgh, Johnson County Sheriff's Office, Johnson County Adult Probation, New Whiteland Police Department, State Police, Marion County Sheriff's Office, Trafalgar Police Department as well as the U.S. Marshals Service. Um, on behalf of, of my office, the prosecutor's office, um, we had uh, Drew Foster who was at our office on call taking care of some subsequent search warrants which came up and additional charges. Uh, Deputy Drew Eggers was actually out in the field with some of the teams helping to field some questions and I was actually at the office too dealing with some address changes on some arrest warrants. So those people all helped as well as Johnson County Clerk Trina McLaughlin. Uh, she and her staff were tremendous in working with us to get these warrants sealed ahead of time so these wouldn't be made public so we have the ability to actually do these kinds of things to catch these people before they go under and hide. Um, we were here a little while ago last fall with a different kind of round of 120 people. It seems kind of small. We're talking about 50 people now when we had so many uh, last time. And I want to give everyone just a little bit of an update on that 120. Uh, of that 120, there's actually only three cases left where people are on the run. We, we've gotten 117 of them uh, dealt with where the warrants are served or, or the cases are going to be dealt with. Uh, of those cases, we have 31 cases that have been closed and have given a total of 162 years of combined jail time. Uh, that's not including any probation, home detention, community corrections time, that's just pure jail time. Uh, 86 of those cases are still pending, but we're expecting about a dozen or so to close within the next 30 days, so we are making substantial progress on those. Uh, of the people who were in that 120 roundup, we have four people uh, whose cases are still pending from that roundup who were also caught dealing in this roundup. So we do have some of the repeat offenders. Um, as far as the 50 people who are here to talk about today that we see behind us here, as you can see, we have a, a great assortment of, of people who are the dealers. Uh, they range from age 20 to age 62. Men, women, black, white, they came from all over Johnson County as well as central Indiana. We have uh, the greatest concentration of those people um, came 12 of them out of Indianapolis, 12 of them out of Franklin, and six of them out of Greenwood. And we actually had a pretty good hotbed of activity here in Franklin that I know some people are going to want to talk about here uh, a little bit later, and I'll give them the opportunity to do that. Uh, of the 50 people we're talking about here today as well, uh, 49 of those 50 were charged with some form of drug dealing offense. Um, a little bit different than our 120, we had some people who were charged with possession offenses and I think those people helped cooperate with law enforcement officers and allowed us to get to this next level, kind of like a, a ripple effect, you're dropping a stone in a pond. We got this level, we're now working to the next level. Uh, these people are, are dealers, not really the addicts, so these are the people who are, who are peddling the poison in our county and these are the people we are very eager to try and get rid of so they don't hurt our community. Uh, within our dealers, 23 of those 50 have multiple instances of dealing and 34 of those 50 are charged with, with dealing methamphetamine. Um, we are glad to have been a part of this and uh, we believe it was a, a great success and really wouldn't happen without cooperation from all the people at this table as well as many more. So in order to talk a little about what, uh, what happened today and why we believe it was a success, I will turn it over to either uh, Sheriff Burgess or, or Chief Cochran, whoever would like to follow up. You got some stats, up. Kirby, if you want to go ahead with those. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, give a big thanks to Sergeant Tony Povinelli who helped put this uh, roundup together as well as the last one. Uh, the Narcotics Division, obviously these folks are the uh, hidden heroes of these operations and help keep our communities safe and clean. Uh, obviously they can't be on camera, but we want to give them thanks uh, for their hard work and uh, we know that they are committed just as we are as a team here at the table. Uh, continue to partner. Uh, the mayor's been very supportive of the change we've made in the police department to try and combat uh, this drug epidemic we have uh, in some key target areas in the city of Franklin. Uh, what I might add is that uh, in one particular house uh, today, it's the second stop we've made at that particular house, 
Uh, we hit that house in the first drug raid. We took a lot of bodies out of there. Uh, and today, uh, the same results, nine folks out of one resident, out of 13 or 14 that were there. Uh, so that's just uh, overall good police work. I can assure you that we are committed at the Franklin Police Department to continuing to working with the Sheriff's Department, all of our surrounding agencies, the Marshal Service, uh, whoever it may be, we want to make it loud and clear that we are going to continue to utilize our targeted patrol team uh, and work together to eradicate these particular areas. We have the full support of the mayor who's here with me today and was out on the streets today seeing what we have. We are out together periodically looking at the neighborhood. Uh, so if I can send any message at all, we're not going to tolerate it. We'll work closely uh, with the prosecutor's office and make sure that charges stick and we're doing good, solid police work and trying to keep the uh, community safe. The citizens deserve to have safe communities throughout Johnson County, not just in the city of Franklin. Uh, Sheriff Burgess and I have talked at length about this. We will continue to partner. So thank you all for coming out and helping us uh, today and everybody that's not here. Thank you. Thanks to the Narcotics Division and the Prosecutor's Office. As Chief Cochran said, we've had a working relationship with the City of Franklin and the Franklin Police Department for many years, and it's going to continue. We're going to work hard. Uh, you, you'll hear people say that you know certain people don't deserve to be in jail. The jail can be crowded, but we're, we're going to make room. People are going to feel safe in Johnson County, and we're going to continue to work hard. And as Chief Cochran said, the, the people behind the scenes, our covert operations guys, they work diligently all the time every day they're out doing something to ensure and and one thing that i can say about johnson county and the police agencies we're, we're proactive we're we're out there doing it we're not going to be reactive and that, that makes a difference and these drug dealers are out they're on the street causing issues selling drugs to people and when you sell drugs it leads to other crimes so we're going to ensure that people stay safe we're going to continue to work together and as he said people people have the right to feel safe you know, just, just on certain streets that we were on, the neighbors were very, very happy seeing the work that's being done because they've lived a nightmare of having some of these folks live right next door to them, and that's sad, and we're not going to allow that to happen. Um, the prosecutor's office has been great. Uh, things are going smooth with us, and it, it's, the operation is going to continue to move forward. I, I would just add, this is public safety at its best. Uh, collaborating together with the... With the uh, County Sheriff and, and our police department. Our city council uh, is working real hard with the mayor's office uh, to make sure that we clean up our streets. Uh, and I will also tell you that we have uh, residents that call the mayor's office and, and give us tips. And when we get those tips, we send them right on to our, our police agencies. So we will continue to work hard to clean up our streets and uh, keep Franklin a safe place. Thank you. Ready for questions? <coughs> Let's start with. Okay, uh, the name of the operation, the weakest link. Who came up with it and why? Sergeant Povinell is in the audience back there. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you, he doesn't have to explain. If you guys can just explain what what that means, why you chose that. Any idea? Tony never told us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. it's a hidden we'll blame that on Tony. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, I think something interesting, so the people you focused on in this one, you said the number is significantly less than your raid back in November, but you said they're all drug dealers. Talk about the significance in really, you know, cutting down on these drug dealers versus drug users. Well, I, I would say the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Uh, great work uh, by Joe V and his team. To, you know, he gave some good, solid stats there. I mean, we're working uh, together. Uh, we're doing good police work. They're being prosecuted. The numbers have dropped. Uh, great work by the narcotics team. Great work uh, by our targeted patrol team. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. So, uh, you know, drug dealers, drug users, we don't want them in our community, period. So uh, call it what you will. Uh, we just don't want them here, and the numbers are speaking for themselves. We're going to continue to work as hard as we uh, have in the past uh, few months since the last week, and we'll do it again next week if we need to do it. So talk about the future impact this would have getting all these drug dealers off the streets in, in custody versus if you just arrested 50 people that use drugs. What's the big significance of getting the people that are putting them out on the streets and distributing it, getting them kind of taken care of? 
Well, I think you know the difference between a user and, and a dealer is the user is going to use it and that's it. That really kind of affects them. The dealer, if I'm dealing to you, I'm dealing to you, I'm dealing to you. That's three separate families that, that you're you're tearing apart and, and lives that you're ruining. And, and the uh, residual effect of, of a dealer is much stronger than, than someone who's an addict. Um, we recognize there's addicts, and we want to try and get help for, for people who really need it. Um, I don't want to do that for dealers. Um, you, you peddle the poison in our county, um, we put you in jail, period. Do you mind breaking down some of these numbers for us, like how many search warrants, how many arrest warrants, how many people were actually arrested today, and how many are still looking for? You guys got the numbers for today? Yeah. Out of, out of the 50 you see behind us, uh, I was told before we got started we had 42, and that was because some of those folks had turned themselves in were incarcerated uh, previously. Today we had 27 as of this press conference located and arrested. We also had 12 new arrests on new charges uh, while at these homes uh, and, and maybe a 13th. Uh, does that help with the numbers? So 27 were located and arrested here Great. in Johnson County or was that? In Johnson County. In Twelve new arrests. Uh, for instance, 870 Andes. We'll put that address out there for you. Uh, nine folks out of 14 that were in the house uh, were arrested. Some of those uh, were not warrant arrests. They were new arrests. So, so we know. We, to, Sorry. So they were not on the list originally. Right. They're correct. not included in that. 50. Correct. Those are bonus people. Great. Yeah, 42 is what we had, uh, warrants we had to start with today. 27 arrested. Something that's important, when, we're, when, when our guys are working these individuals, today you're seeing the culmination of a lot of good work that come together. But while they're working these, they're also serving other search warrants that they, that's a spinoff from these people that we hit immediately because it's simply causing neighbors issues and we're going to shut those houses down as quick as we can. That's why you're not seeing a big number of 120 because there, there's work in progress and it, it's not going to stop. Were any of these people or a significant number of these people um, someone that you guys have had issues with before that are repeat offenders that now you're getting them on a larger charge or you know people you dealt with in the past or a lot of these people knew? Well, four of the people who were part of the right. subject today were, were people who had pending cases from the last round. So we do have some repeat offenders. Um, I believe the remainder are, are new, not part of any previous roundups. So, Sheriff, this is your uh, first combined raid, so to speak, since the coming sheriff. Um, yeah, are we going to see more of this during your tenure? Or? We're going to continue. Uh, great relationship with all the agencies in the county, especially uh, Franklin. I mean, we, we've, we've had a marriage with, with their organization and their, their narcotics units, and it, it's going to continue. And, and I know that we're speaking of adding an additional narcotics officer as well as Franklin is to theirs. We're, we're taking it very serious, and uh, we're going we're gonna to fight this head on. So was, was, was a lot of this done um, thanks to undercover buys, or how did you even start tracking We're both good police work and undercover work them just following those leads and, and, and just tracking them and going to the next person and just going to the next person and, and trying to shut down that operation. What kind of timeline can you give for this? How long did it last to be able to kind of start the process of whether it was the police work or the undercover buys leading up to today being able to serve all these warrants and make arrests? I think it probably started right after the last raid. Right. So November-ish? Yeah. And then what kind of message are you guys trying to send with these I mean, large arrests. This is smaller than the last, but still 50 is a significant number. 120 last time. You know, what kind of message are you guys trying to get across here? I think the big, big message is for the citizens: uh, let them know that we are trying to work together. Um, it does take a good partnership, uh, law enforcement, police departments, outside agencies, especially with the prosecutor's office. Um, we want to send a message that we are trying to make communities safe. We're dedicated to, to doing whatever it takes and whatever manpower we need. The mayor's offered to, to put his foot forward and get us the, the manpower we need. So uh, I would just say, uh, you know, drug dealers, we don't want them here. These folks that uh, own these properties where these, we, these homes are at and these people keep coming back to, we want to let them know that we're working with the authorities in the community, in the city, and we're trying to shut those homes down. Uh, we're going to work hard on it. this one particular address I mentioned earlier. 
nine folks out of 14, that's incredible. You know, uh, and to say, are those some of the same people? No, but uh, they're in the same, they're, we would all agree they're in the same connection, the same group. So uh, we're going we're gonna to stay on top of that area until something happens with it. Uh, so just as citizens, we want you to know that we're working together. What do you say to the drug dealers that are going to see you guys on the news, you clean this particular uh, ring of people out, and they're probably thinking, oh, there's new territory we can go and sell to people that want some drugs. Well, we weren't happy to introduce them to our narcotics guys, and we're going to we'll put see, We'll see you again in six months, <laughs> is what we'll tell you. Yeah, I, I think one of the reasons we have success here in Johnson County, at least from the, from the legal end, and the reason we're able to get, you know, 162 years of jail time on our last round is because of the outstanding detective work by the people in both these agencies as well as some other ones. Uh, they are really able to put together, I hate to use the word airtight cases, but it's probably about as close as you can get. Uh, the, the video footage they're able to obtain on these deals uh, in really very dangerous situations is, is tremendous. And it's that kind of evidence that really allows us to say, hey, here's Here's your ding. Take it, or you're going to go to prison for even longer. Um, it's that kind of things we look forward to, and, and we will do everything we can to help foster and, and, and encourage and uh, assist in any way we can. Because half the problem and half the process is getting good police work and getting solid cases to us. It's our job to then carry the ball across the field goal line and put them in jail where they belong. With these arrests, um, any cash found? Uh, we did have a couple of weapons. Uh, haven't heard any cash numbers. We definitely had a couple of weapons, uh, one of which came out of uh, the address that we've been speaking so much about. Uh, so anytime you get one gun off the street, whether it's one, two, five, it doesn't matter. I mean, you got drugs and guns together, bad things are going to happen. So we did get a couple of guns today. We're excited about that. And have you been able to, have you been able to identify if those were illegally owned uh, guns or how they were able to get them? I haven't heard any of that information as of right now. I know that you said most of these drug dealers were dealing meth. Do you know how, how much, how many drugs you guys were able to obtain? I don't know that I can give you a, like a quantity of, of meth that we took off the street. You know, various um, people had various levels of dealing. Some dealt in smaller quantities and others. Some dealt um, multiple instances. Some dealt with, with one. But uh, the, the vast majority, uh, 34 of that 50, were, were dealing meth in, in some form or fashion. Were the majority of these meth dealers or were people selling other substances as well? I know you said the 30. Um, some, sometimes they were. Sometimes it was multiple deals of meth. Sometimes a single deal of meth. Sometimes they dealt meth on one occasion and uh, pills on another, uh, meth on one occasion, heroin on another. It, it really runs, runs the spectrum of, of what they were trying to put in our community. So how big of an impact do you think this, you know, specific roundup is going to, you know, directly put onto the community in, in Johnson County? Well, Go ahead. well I'd, I mean, I'd say you take 27 people out of the game. I mean, you shorten your team. Uh, and we'll do it piece by piece. We'll continue to do it piece by piece. So what impact does it have? That's hard to say. But you got to remember, uh, when we're dealing drugs, we're also stealing from people taken from homes, taken from kids, taken from families. So having said that, you know, 27 people off the street, fantastic police work. Uh, it, it's got to have a huge p impact. I can tell you within an hour of uh, me dropping the mayor off at City Hall, I received several messages uh, from people in this 870 Andes area. They are excited. They're happy. They're making phone calls. These are the people that call my office every day and call the mayor's office every day complaining. So. Um, I can, I can tell you that it is impacting the neighborhood, and uh, we're going to continue to target those areas and, and do what we need to do. I, I can tell you that I had, uh, I had people sending me text messages immediately whenever we were at a house. Um, good work. Tell your officers thank you very much. We had a gentleman standing at the back door of, his, of one of the neighbors. were giving us a thumbs up. I mean, these, these neighborhoods are pretty excited to see that we're doing our job. And, and I can't say enough about our Franklin police officers and the undercover officers that, that put their life on the line for our neighborhoods and, and doing just a great job. So it, it is making a big impact to our neighborhoods. And we're seeing it and we're hearing it. Uh, we even have, we have some kids telling us where some of these places are at. So it, it's out there and we want to get it off the streets.
anything else. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you coming. Good job, guys. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Could you um, spell your first and last name, please, quickly, so we make sure we get it? <coughs> Dwayne, D U A N E, Burgess, B U R G E S S. Johnson County Sheriff. Yes, ma'am. Joe Villanueva, V I L L A N U E V A, Johnson County Prosecutor's Office. Kirby, K I R B Y, Cochran, C O C H R A N, Chief of Police, Franklin.